This is Scott the Fix-It Guy. Our goal with our videos is to empower you to be able to do the repairs on your own and save a whole lot of money and also get that great feeling of having fixed it by yourself. Today we have the very common OE error where the LG washer dryer doesn't drain anymore and it's due to a worn out drain pump. Pretty easy to replace though. So we just took the cover off the front here. We're gonna take out two Phillips head screws that are holding on the bottom plate. And this is the pump that you need to get, and they're pretty cheap. This one comes with a one-year warranty. You can get it from Amazon through Prime. It's only gonna be probably 35 something with taxes, and you get it pretty quick. Once you get the new pump, here's a little link here you can use to order the pump. Just gotta remove this bottom panel. So once you get off those two screws, we're gonna pry it off with a standard head screwdriver. Here's what the new pump looks like. And these tend to go out pretty fast on these machines. They're good machines, but the pumps for some reason just don't last very long. So in the time you own it, you might have to replace the pump a couple of times. So we're gonna zip out that last Phillips head screw. These are uh, have like a white coating on them, just so it's easy during reassembly. And we're going to use a standard head screwdriver to help us to get this bottom panel pried off. And then we're going to lift it up off of its clips at the bottom. And now there's going to be three Phillips head screws that we want to remove that are holding the, plump, the pump in position to the frame. These little silver Phillips head screws, three of them. We want to get those out. We also want to pull the power connectors off of the pump. They're right here in my left hand. Just pull straight back and we're going to slip the wires out of a little holder. Get those out of the way. We don't have to disconnect any of the hoses. You can, but this is a little faster way to do it. So I do these pretty often and this only takes a few minutes if you use this method. So we take out those Phillips head screws holding on the pump. We're going to push in on the pump a little bit lift it up to get better access to the screws that are holding it on. There's three screws. You can see two of them here with the red arrows. There's one on the other side too. So they're just Phillips head screws. And we're going to be removing those. We're going to kind of lift the whole pump assembly up about 45 degrees so we can get our Phillips head screwdriver in there. So we're taking out one of those screws and you just pull it out by hand and then We'll lift up a little bit on the pump to give us better access. There we go. And we're gonna reach in and get that one. This is the one that's kind of facing right out towards you. And then there'll be one more that's kind of on the bottom below. I lifted up the pump a little more so you can see it. This is about that one. And then you can just pull the old pump right off. Usually the impeller, the thing that spins, kind of breaks free of the motor shaft, and then when the motor shaft spins, it doesn't move the water. This one seems a bit cockeyed, like it got hit by something. So before I put in the new one, I'll reach in to the pump assembly where this impeller used to live to make sure there's nothing caught in there, like there's not a coin or something or paper clip. So it looks good, nice and clear. And I'm going to pry off this old dust cover that came off of the old one, and I'm gonna put that dust cover onto the new pump. You just push it on until it clicks in place. And then I'm gonna put that pump back on and add those three Phillips head screws. Just make sure you get those screws on pretty tight. And then I'm gonna put the pump back into position. I'm gonna add the three Phillips head screws that were holding it on and add the power connectors back in, the modular connectors to give it power and then I can turn it on and have it fill. We do call this a leak test. So we're gonna turn, turn it on like it's normally would uh, be a normal cycle. Let it fill with water and we're just staring in here to make sure that there's no water pouring out. If you did have some water, it's not a big deal. It just means that you probably have to get those three Phillips head screws a little bit tighter. So this is the leak test. And during this leak test, we didn't see any water. so. Get those screws on there, get the pump back into position. And we want to let it fill with water before we put on the bottom panel because we also want to set it to drain. 
to make sure that everything's working, make sure the drain pump is getting power, and that it's active, and it's able to get rid of the water. So this is a really common repair on the LG washing machine. So no leaks during the fill test, looks good. What I'll do now is I'll go ahead and turn off the power. I'll turn the power back on and I'll set the machine to drain and spin. And then I'll turn it back on and just make sure that this water I can see in here, make sure this water will drain out. So turn it off, turn the power off, test out the new pump. I'll set it all the way over here now, get the power back on all the way to drain and spin. And when I start it, the drain's going to turn active here any second. Yep, I can hear it. And I can hear the water moving. So it is draining the water out pretty fast as it should. Still, I don't see any leaks. So I feel good now for putting on that bottom panel, and we're done. So I'm just going to feed this hose through this hole here on the bottom panel. I'm going to put the bottom panel down on its little clips at the back and I'll push in until it clicks. I'm going to put those two Phillips head screws back in to hold on the bottom panel. And this machine's probably going to work really good for maybe another four or five years. Put on this little cover, we're done. So thanks so much for watching and please subscribe to our channel when you get a chance. Really appreciate it.